In this tutorial, we're going to look at using Notation Composer along with Garrison Libraries. Now, in order to use the ARIA player as your playback device, um, you are going to need, um, if you don't already have um, a vir virtual MIDI cable installed, I would strongly encourage you to take a look at the video tutorial that we have for that. Um, that and any other video tutorials that you need to look at are located at the Notation Software User Forum, um, as well as template files for the Garrison Libraries. So if you need to get those, you can go to Notation Software's website, www.notation.com, go to Community, Discussion Forum, and it will take you right to the home page. Uh, you are free to register and participate there go down there's the tutorial videos it has its own area and if you you can find the um, video tutorial for installing a MIDI cable if you need to MIDI virtual cable okay this is not the physical cables that go to um, any keyboards and such that you have okay the virtual cable connects notation composer to the aria player <coughs> okay now to get the um, template files to use in composer you go to using notation software products with other third-party products and right here at the top is a sticky thread called Garrison library templates okay um, I've included a little section on how I made those templates in case you want to make your own and more importantly for this particular thing there are some notes here about the templates and ta-da in zip files there are the GPO templates and the Jazz and Bag, Jazz and Big Band woohoo templates. Okay, so you can grab those and open them up uh, into a folder that you have. You can take those and actually put them into your notation song folder if you want, or into the templates folder, which might even be better. And that way, when you open up, uh, when you go to the, the options here, and you uh, create a new song you'll have them right there in your template list um, which is nice um, if you don't and you simply open them from a folder then you should rename that uh, as soon as you have started working on it to your song name uh, just so you don't overwrite your template file but you know if you ever do you can always go back to the forum and download them again okay so a couple of items here we are going to use the MIDI, the virtual MIDI cable to communicate between Composer and the ARIA player. Okay, so what you want to do just as a you know prior to getting things going, let's check setup. You, or I'm sorry, not that one. Staff setup. Okay, and you will notice that the channel assignments for the various tracks. Um, channel 1 is set for both the flute, the, the notation track, and for a special track here that we have set up for the key switch. And we'll address that a little further here in a minute. Okay, channel 1. Um, loop B1 is going to be my device, and if you installed the loop B um, single cable, that's what you'll use. Now for the Garrison side of things, we're going to look in Tools and Preferences and there's our input device okay so we're hooked up to the same cable all right and um, if you're going to use this in real time like if you want to play on your keyboard and hear the feedback really well I strongly encourage you to use ASIO okay um, this will um, as we mentioned before in the virtual MIDI cable it'll eliminate any latency so you won't have this lag between when you touch a key and when you hear the sound okay now the ASIO driver that you use on your own configuration um, may be different um, my sound card has its own which it likes to use there's also an option that's really good if you don't have a native driver for your sound card it's called ASIO for all and that's also referenced in the virtual MIDI cable video and the information with that video okay so I'm gonna leave mine at that Otherwise, it will not like me, and it will die. Um, 
such as the idiosyncrasies of my setup. Okay, so we've got the tools part set up. Let's pull up the ensemble. Okay, and this is the, you'll notice up in the um, composer window that it's the GPO01 woodwind quintet that we have loaded, so that's what we're going to load here. All right. Another important thing to notice, and that's going to disappear while I do that, isn't it? Okay. Um, you'll notice that the channel numbers are aligned with the instruments that are in the ARIA player. This is very important because otherwise you will hear a different instrument or you'll hear nothing. And you'll go, what's going on? Check your channel numbers. <laughs> so the B-flat clarinet solo, channel 2. Um, oboe, modern solo, channel 3, etc., etc. Okay, so that's something that you need to check. Now, very cool thing is that with Composer, you can control all of the volume and all the other stuff that you need to write within the score. Okay, and we'll be doing a, a more extensive tutorial on this, but I just want to show you a few of the, the, uh, the things that you can now do. Garretton libraries rely heavily on use of various controllers to give expression to the instrument sound. Okay, a um, couple of those note velocity, um, and you can work on that here. Um, sound changes you won't need because that's a MIDI thing. Um, graph over notes though is going to be very very helpful to you. Now we've got the volume set here. Um, and all of the uh, all of the templates for the Garretton libraries already come with the mod wheel values. Okay, if you want to graph that, okay, mod wheel is here. Then you hit the controller that has a question, which means you can tell what it is. Mod wheel is already set for. Um, about halfway, it's about 8,000, okay? Um, given the expression that is used in the Garretton libraries, you're strongly encouraged that, you know, at, at, it's set at 8,000 so you'll hear something, okay? And so that it won't reset to zero when you rewind your file. Um, you're strongly encouraged to use this to draw. Um, if you notice here, you've got it, you can actually use your mouse, click in here, and you can draw right over top of your notation some cha you know, whatever changes. If you need, you can, um, whoop, I didn't want it that big. I just want to pull it over a little bit. Okay, my screen's acting funky. There's a magnify, <laughs> a zoom in, okay? So you can get right in and draw really nice curves, you know, where you want to. Um, I don't have any notation in here, but as I said, I'll show you a little more of that in more, you know, in, in better detail later on in another video. But just for right now, you can use those controllers. You can pick um, expression controllers, okay? Draw in your curves for that, all right? Um, you know, you can click, drag. You can set, if you need, if you want to just set a value, um, you can select a range, set a value here, and it shows you what your available values are, okay? So, uh, just for kicks. Okay, so, and you get a, a straight line set for that range of measures. Okay, so this is a really handy um, way to um, enter your controller values and stuff to affect the performance that you get. Okay, um, for notes and rests, you can see our videos on various ways that you can enter notes. Um, Composer is one of the best tools that you can use if you want to enter notes in a live recording setting, okay? In other words, you want to play into the thing. It will give you more readable notation, excuse me, um, better readable notation, plus the, the performance nuances are preserved better. Um, it does not quantize the notation stuff that you put in, so you can do a lot of very nice performance um, editing, um, just like a sequencer. It's, it's really rather a hybrid um, between a notation program and a sequencer because it gives you the best of both worlds really. So, to use um, 
composer with the uh, Garretton uh, libraries. It's a pretty easy setup and gives you a lot of flexibility for working with your score. So I hope you've enjoyed that brief little uh, introduction. You can use Notation Musician and Garrington Libraries um, for playback, but you obviously can't record into Musician. For composing, uh, Notation Composer is the one you'll want to use. And Garrington Libraries offer a really affordable um, and very wide, uh, very broad range of instruments to choose from. Um, one item that I almost forgot to show you, um, therefore that's why we have this addendum, is that <coughs> You may, you know, this view here is excellent for working on a score, okay, adding your notes, graphing your, um, your MIDI controllers and things like that, and for including your, your key switch notes, okay, that's, we have this here because what, um, you know, if you want to switch the instrument sounds, you can enter those key switch notes on this staff, and they won't affect the notation in your notation staff. Now, when you get ready to print this out, okay, say you want to print it out for your flute player, you don't want to have the key switch notes, you know, just dis distracting them or anything. We have, if you, for your conductor score, you can use the print, okay. It will not show those key switch note tracks or staves, all right. And also, as you will have seen here, very handy, um, this is the part drop list. You can also choose to print just the flute soloist part. Now this is pretty short right now because it's just a template file, um, but it will be obviously as long as you want. This is the window view. To print that as the notation view, um, you would use the page view, okay? And you can, there's, we have other videos that will show you how to you know, put the text, titles, uh, things like that in for any file that you have. Okay, so back to the conductor score. This is where we were. Enjoy!